What makes your mom happy? Flowers, when I listen. Wanna be good or something? A hug. I don't know, that's too tight. What makes your mom sad? When I don't listen. Oh, like when we get hurt. What's something that your mom does every day? Read the Bible, cleans the house. I think work. Kisses me. What's something your mom always says to you? I love you and brush my teeth. Go clean your room. Behave. Don't let the dog upstairs. Do not bother mom when while she's sleeping. How old is your mom? I think five. Twelve. That's a very, very tricky question. Um, I know she's um, a half and something. Seventy. What's your mom's favorite thing to do? Play with me. Sit in that chair. Date night. Shop. Shopping. Go shopping. She's just shopping every day. She just always wants to go shopping. She and I get tired. Doing that, it's kind of boring. Where's your mom's favorite place to go? Chinese restaurant. An animal shelter. I think it's to the mall. Go to the restroom. <laughs> How are you and your mom the same? Our hair. Our eyes. We we'll have the same phones. We're really flexible. We both have long tongues, but my sister and my dad don't really. How are you and your mom different? Our eyes are different. The color of me. I'm brown and she's tan. Mom has curly hair and I have straight hair. I do have better abs. What's your favorite thing about your mom? That she doesn't like to be away from us. When she gets down the floor and plays with me. She's a really good teacher. I like her face. Her smile. When she lets me put on her makeup. That I can cuddle with her <laughs> at night. She is really special. She's really, 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 really nice. How do you know that your mom loves you? She prays and she kisses me and she says I love you. So she's in my family. How she takes care of us. By making breakfast. Do my laundry. That she helps me get dressed. Takes me to all the things I do after school. That she plays games with me. Play soccer with me. Play bubbles. When I sit in her lap. We watch movies. We get our nails painted. Make a scrapbook. Fish. Fish. Outside cookouts and bonfires. She spends time with us and not all by herself. She's patient. With us. She does everything with me. Because she says it every day. She says me every night. And all kinds of stuff. I just know that she loves me because she says, I'll always love you. She's awesome. She loves me no matter what. Like God. I love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Welcome to Sunday School. As you know, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to do a little science experiment that talks about the Holy Spirit. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit, we can't really see him, but we know he's there. Okay? As, as believers, once we accept Christ and, and have a relationship with him, we know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. So like I said, we can't see him, but we can't see air either. But we know that if I blow on this on this uh, paper towel, of course it'll move because of the air. I don't see the air, but I know it's there. So even though we don't see the Holy Spirit, we know the Holy Spirit is around and the Holy Spirit is there to help us a lot of the time. So let's think about that. Be thinking about the Holy Spirit helping you. And the things I'm gonna use for my experiment are a paper towel, uh, and then I've got a clear plastic cup so you can see it and a clear uh, vase or vase um, is what I have that was clear. You could use a bucket, uh, you could use anything. So just make sure they're all clear so you can see it. The first thing I'm gonna do is fill this, this up with some water. Regular water, regular temperature, doesn't matter. All right, I just did it about halfway full, okay. Let me bring this a little closer so you can see. All right. Now, I'm gonna take the paper towel, I'm just gonna mash it up a little bit and put it inside 
the cup, okay? Put the paper towel inside the cup. Now, if I flip this over upside down and put it in the cup in here, what do you think will happen? I think it'll either sink, I think it'll float. There's lots of things that can happen. But what will happen is what I'm going to tell you. When I put this in here, basically the paper towel represents us. The water uh, represents something that could be bad. We don't want that to happen to us. And the Holy Spirit is represented by the air in between the paper towel and the water. So when I put it in, because there's air there or the Holy Spirit, it's actually going to protect and not allow me, the paper towel, to get wet. So check it out. Let's make sure that's in there good. Here we go. And I know what you're thinking right now is, oh, bro, Evan, that's actually hitting the sides. But as you can see, it's moving around. And see, it's actually moved off the edge. But if I grab it and pull it out, you can see it caused the air pocket, the air did, or the Holy Spirit, and didn't allow me anything to happen to the paper towel. So that's just a cool experiment that just shows you sometimes even things we can't see that are around us protect us, just like the Holy Spirit is there to help us. He's there to help us each and every day. So we're going to get into a Bible story today. We've been talking about Paul. We're going to talk about him more and the Holy Spirit. Check it out. All right. That was a pretty fun science experiment, but now we're going to change pace a little. And I want you to make sure you've got a marker or pen and a blank piece of paper because we're going to do a little activity with that. So make sure if you don't have that, go ahead and pause, go get that and come right back. While you're at it, you might want to get that Bible as well. Okay, hopefully you're back with your pen and paper. Now, we're going to give some instructions and see if you can follow them. First, step one, draw a line from the left side of the paper to the right side, okay? Not all the way, not all the way. But left to right. So you got one line from left to right on the paper. Step two, draw two diagonal lines that join at the bottom to form a triangle. So basically you have one line at the top, you wanna to draw two diagonal lines, one from each corner to form a triangle. Okay, step three, from the original line, which is the first line that we drew, draw two short, which is little, diagonal lines going up and toward each other, but do not connect them. So it's two little short lines from your first line going up instead of down. Okay, step four, connect these two lines with a straight line parallel to the original line. So parallel means the same direction. So that would mean if it's a line here, then there's a line there. Same direction. So you wanna draw another line, connect the two lines you just drew with a straight line parallel to the original line. All right, now, step five, draw two diagonal lines from the top two corners to the one bottom point. So you should have two corners at the top. You want to draw two diagonal lines from the top two corners to the one bottom point. So you should draw two lines, one from the point on the left, one from the point on the right to the bottom, okay?
All right. Now, step six, this is the final step. In the top center shape of the diamond, draw a triangle using the original line as the bottom of the triangle. All right. This should have helped you draw the perfect diamond. They all may look a little different, but what we wanted to help us understand through that activity, which was pretty fun, was that when we did that, we had to, actually you were listening to my instruction, okay? And, and so when we listen to the Holy Spirit, he's there to help us and he's there to help direct us. And you know what? Some of y'all might have thought this was really easy to do. And some of y'all might have thought that it was hard. But no matter what comes up in our lives, easy or hard, the Holy Spirit is there to help us with that task. Okay? Now, let's take a look at God's Word. I told you to go ahead and get your Bible. Open them up to Acts. I'm going to open them up to Acts chapter 15. So Acts chapter 15. Let me spin mine around and get there. And I want us to see what happened in today's story, okay? Acts chapter 15, here we go. We're going to start in verse 36. And if, in my Bible, it has something written right above that that says, disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. If you've had a disagreement with somebody since you've been out of school, say, that's me. Hopefully you all said, that's me, if you're being honest. During this time, I know I've had a few disagreements with some family members, maybe disagreements with my kids. So this is a disagreement that happened between Paul and Barnabas. So at this point, just to give you a little background, they had already went and visited a bunch of places and they had started some churches. So this picks up at that point. So chapter 15 Verse 36, it says, Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's go back and visit the brothers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Barnabas wanted to take John and also called Mark with them. So Barnabas said, well, I want to take John Mark. Or they called him Mark, but it was John with them. And Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them when they were in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. So Paul was basically like, eh, I don't know about taking him. He deserted us. I don't think that's a good idea. So they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Now Barnabas took Mark, which was who he originally wanted to take, and he sailed for Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left, commanded by the brothers, to the grace of the Lord, he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches there. So basically, Paul and Silas were together at this point. Now, if we look at chapter 16, um, listen to what happened here. He came to Derbe and then Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was a Jewish and back, uh, I'm sorry, and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. Now the brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. So Paul wanted to take him along on the journey. So at this point, Paul has now got another person involved. So one cool thing that the Holy Spirit has done through this is, you know what? Uh, even though there was a disagreement and things were going to get a little rough and, and there was some, something that happened along the way, now there's more people going to share the gospel, which is awesome. So they've got Timothy involved now, and let's pick up uh, back in verse, um, let's go ahead and go in verse 6. It says, Paul and, companion, and his companions, which was Silas and Timothy, traveled throughout the region of uh, Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. So the Holy Spirit didn't want him preaching in Asia. And when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. 
So at this point, Holy Spirit was telling them, not yet. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had seen the vision. We got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, Paul was ready to preach the gospel to all these people, but he just wasn't, he didn't feel like God wanted him to do that. And, and so basically he decided, look, I had this vision and I think it's time to go. And from there we see that they go and do what God wants them to do, which is share the gospel. So in that story, what we see is the Holy Spirit was there working with Paul and helping him decide the right thing to do and when to do it, just like he does for us. I want, um, I wanted to share a little story with you guys, but I'm going to have one of you share a story about how the Holy Spirit's worked in their life. And then after our special friend shares, then um, I'll go ahead and share with you a story about the Holy Spirit working in my life. Hi, I'm Lucy Gray. Um, and one of the times that the Holy Spirit has really affected me and like told me to go do something is we were at recess and I was hanging out with some friends and some girl pointed at this at one of my other friends and I was like, what about her? And she was, and she was like, I think she might be crying. So I went over there and it turns out one of her friends was being super like mean to her. So then we prayed and talked it out and she felt great after that. And that is one way that the Holy Spirit has really helped me grow spiritually to show that I need to show kindness and show God to everyone around me. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Gray. Great story. So you see, the Holy Spirit doesn't just work in adults' lives. He works in your lives as well. But I wanted to share a story about how he worked in my life one time. One time I had a, a, a friend of mine that brought a friend of his to church. Now, the friend of mine dressed like me, acted like me. We were pretty similar. But the friend he brought looked and acted a lot different than me. I was an athlete. I liked sports. This guy's friend had real long hair, liked headbanger music. That was kind of his thing. Um, so, you know, the first time I met him, he was a nice guy, but we really didn't have much in common. Well, that next week, that guy had a job at a company that did landscaping and grass. So across the street from my house, the headbanger guy was working and he was laying grass, like squares of grass in front of this lawn all day. And I looked out a couple times and I mean, he was dripping with sweat. And then I got to thinking and I was really in tune with God at the time. And I, I was like, God, you know, um, what, what do you want me to do? And God was like, go ahead and see if he wants a drink. You have drinks at the house, bring him a drink and, and just see if he wants one. I was thinking, that is kind of weird. I do not know this guy at all. I've met him one time. And he's going to think I'm a weirdo going, hey, you want something to drink? So I was a little nervous about doing it. But here's the thing. I knew God wanted me to do it. I knew the Holy Spirit was telling me to do it. So I was ready to follow and do what God wanted me to do. So sure enough, I got a Coke on ice and took a bottle of water and walked across the street. The guy's name was Steve. I said, Steve, man, I see you've been working all day. I said, you want a Coke or some water? And he said, oh, that'd be great. He took both of them. And sure enough, um, talking to Steve, Steve eventually started coming to our church. Steve eventually became a Christ follower. It was a great story. And you know what? Uh, me and different other people accepted Steve, even though he was different than us. We loved on Steve, even though he, he, he didn't act like we did, because God calls us to love everyone. And even though we didn't have a lot in common, um, we ended up actually becoming pretty good friends. So here's the thing. Sometimes the Holy Spirit's going to ask you to do something. And you might be a little, eh, I don't know. But it's important that we listen to the Holy Spirit and follow what he wants us to do. We're going to talk more in Brick House about listening and reading God's word and learning how to apply God's word. So come on back and join us for Brick House today.